Alright, so I've got my Raspberry Pi all set up, and uh, so I have got my controller, I've uh, got an SNS controller, uh, it's USB end, and then I have my Wi Fi dongle, uh, which I'll talk about how to configure, and then this is just a USB a Bluetooth for my wireless keyboard, but it's not necessary you know, if you want to do SSH, and then my HDMI straight to my television, and then just micro SD. So, in order to turn it on, well, and I've also Put in the micro SD card that we recently formatted and booted with the RetroPie image. Um, and I don't have it in a case, but I do have a case that I've made for other ones, um, which I'll probably make for this one as well. Just 3D printed it. Um, I'll probably talk about that in another post as well. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. But so in order to turn it on, all you've got to do is plug it in. So the green lights will show it's starting. So this is what you can see. So as you can see, it's got four raspberries on the top, showing I've got the most recent model of Raspberry Pi. And the four raspberries show that there's four cores in the processor. Um, and so this is a typical screen you'll see every time it starts up. It starts up a lot faster than the Raspberry Pi B Plus that I used to have. Um, and I can talk about configuring custom uh, video splash screens as well. Um, and also hiding the boot text if you don't like that retro feel. So this is the first thing you'll see when it boots up. Um, and it shows that there's one gamepad detected. So um, all you got to do is hold down a button on your gamepad, just hold it down, um, and then you just press up, down, left, right, A, B, star, select, page up, and page down, so left, right, tab buttons. Um, so that will open you up, and you can see um, just the default emulators and games they've got set up already. Um, and these, um, you're probably wondering why you don't see Super Nintendo or N64 or any of those. Um, in order for those to show up on this splash screen, you're going to have to put ROMs in their folders. And so depending on which ROMs you put in which folders, that will determine which emulator shows up. So if I put ROMs in the N64 folder and rebooted, then the N64 would show up here. So um, that's, that's one thing to pay attention to. Um, and then say you want to configure another controller for emulation station, you press the start button or whatever button you chose for start, and then press A to configure input. So I've got my keyboard hooked in right now, so I'm holding down the key, so it shows up my keyboard, so I can configure that as well. Up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select, left, right, wherever it is. Um, but you also need to understand that this uh, configuration isn't for your games itself, it's only for this front end emulation station. Um, so you might have to do separate configurations for each individual emulator. Um, so I'll probably uh, do some videos on that, just how you can configure each emulator uh, for your controllers, because they might be a little bit different um, depending on the emulator and games you're using. Um, so I think that's about it for Emulation Station. The person who developed it is a, man, a guy named Oloshi, um, and the thematic interface, like the, how pretty it is and all that, that was developed by Niels. Um, so feel free to donate to Emulation Station as well as RetroPie Project. Um, they've done a lot of hard work on it and I think that they deserve some uh, recompense for it as well. So uh, next I think I'll talk about configuring controllers. Well, first off, uh, you probably want to put ROMs on because you want to configure controllers for games, but if you don't have games you can't configure them. So um, yeah, I'll definitely talk about that next, is how to put ROMs onto um, your emulators and then we'll talk about how to configure controllers for those so stay tuned <laughs>